Production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by Johnson's Automotive Service is a proud supporter of Panther Sports on WEIU. Johnson's is a complete car facility for all your automotive repair and maintenance needs. Johnson's Automotive Service, keeping your life running. Welcome to another edition of Panther Sports Talk on WEIU. I'm Ramin Carbassoon, filling in for Rich Moser this week. On this week's show, we'll take a look back at some features we've ran in recent weeks on EIU athletes. But first, EIU football senior quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo continues his journey toward the NFL. We'll take a look at his pro day, which was held last Tuesday in Evanston, Illinois. Then a feature we ran just last week on two first-year players for EIU basketball, Dylan Chapman and Erica Brown. Then a feature we ran a couple weeks ago on Calvin Edwards of track. The day after Edwards' feature was aired, he was named 2014 OVC Indoor Track Male Athlete of the Year. And then lastly, we have a feature on senior Janelle Prisoner of women's tennis. Prisoner and the Panthers are off to a 6-0 start this season as they begin outdoor play this weekend. And then we'll wrap up this week's show with some of the best plays from the EIU basketball season. But first, we'll kick off things with this week in EIU athletics. Thanks for watching Panther Sports Talk on WEIU. Men's basketball wrapped up their season in the first round of the OVC tournament. They lost 79-61 to Southeast Missouri State. They finished the season 11-19 overall. Women's basketball also concluded their season in the first round of the OVC tournament. They lost 75-52 to Eastern Kentucky. They finished their season 12-16. Baseball now 3-12 on the season and 1-2 and to start OVC play as they went 1-2 and at SIU Edwardsville this past weekend. Softball went 2-0 and at the abbreviated Coastal Carolina tournament. They won over Bryant and Furman. Panthers continued action Monday and Tuesday against Coastal Carolina and East Carolina with doubleheaders. For results and stats of those games, check out EIUPanthers.com. Men's tennis dropped to 3-4 and four as they lost 4-3 at Bradley. Men's and women's golf took part in the Don Benval Butler invite in Jacksonville, Florida. For the results of that tournament for the Panthers, check out EIUPanthers.com. Now here's what to watch for this week. On Wednesday, men's and women's golf begin a two-day run at the Butler Bulldog Florida Invite in Jacksonville, Florida. On Thursday, they'll wrap up competition there in Jacksonville, Florida. On Friday, select Panther athletes from track will compete in the NCAA Indoor Championships in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And baseball begins a three-game series at OVC rival Austin P. with the first game starting at 6 o'clock. On Saturday, track wraps up competition at the NCAA Indoor Championships in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Men's and women's tennis are at Moorhead State at 10 a.m. Softball with their first games at Williams Field this season as they take on OVC rival Southeast Missouri State in a doubleheader with the first game at 1 o'clock. Baseball with game two at Austin P. at 2 o'clock. On Sunday, women's tennis is at Eastern Kentucky at 9 o'clock, followed by the men's tennis match at Eastern Kentucky at 12.30. Softball wraps up their three-game series at Williams Field against Southeast Missouri State at 1 o'clock, and baseball wraps up their three-game series at Austin P. at 1 o'clock. And next Tuesday, March 18th, baseball is in Carbondale, Illinois, to take on Southern Illinois at 3 o'clock. For Panther Sports Talk, I'm Ramin Kibasiun. Session go with uh, Jim Harbaugh, the coach of the 49ers. Oh, everyone will. Uh, we were back there slinging it around. I mean, he can still throw it pretty well for uh, being the ex-quarterback and all, but I mean, it went real well. I uh, learned a lot from him. He was teaching me little things here and there, and you know, I, I learned a lot, so it was what, fun. What were one of the things, perhaps, that you could focus in on that he helped you with, helped teach you? Uh, you know, he wasn't so much trying to teach me. It was just little things like, hey, if they do this, you should react like this. And, because, I mean, he's not trying to teach me anything right now, more so just little hints here and there. I mean, if I could steal a little bit of knowledge from him, put it towards my game, then, you know, I'm doing something right. What's this whole experience like for you, this pro game experience? Uh, you know, it's exciting. I'm having fun with it. Uh, I get to come out here, sling it around with some of the best receivers. And, I mean, one of my receivers here, Eric Laura. So, I mean, we're, we're going to go out there, oh sling it around, and, you know, hopefully impress some scouts. I, I like carrying that with me. I, I'm proud to be from Eastern Illinois, and I'm proud to be from there. So. You know, they, they, don't, they just want to know my football knowledge, really. They want to know how I know the game, what coverages I know, everything, the ins and outs of it, really. And, you know, I do a, well, a good job of uh, communicating that to them and regurgitating what they teach me. It's been hectic. My parents, are they're loving it, though. My brothers, uh, all their friends are really staying with me and uh, just keeping up to date on everything. So they're, they're all having fun with it. Uh, my mom's learning more and more football as we go along. She didn't know too much, but she's catching on. So, you know, they're having fun with it just like I am. And, you know, that's what you got to do. I mean, you got to enjoy the process. We have a short script. I mean, it's not too many throws, but, uh, you know, after that, we're going to ask the scouts if they have anything that they want to see. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm here to impress them, do whatever they want want to see, and, you know, we'll just take it from there. Really. How about didn't wear you out too much? Like no, no, my arm could go forever. I mean, running the Baylor offense, you get you get to good stamina with your arm. What has Ty Detman taught you as well? What, what, have you, what has he taught me? Yeah, what have you learned most from him coming into? Uh, you know, just the little things, uh, how blitzes are connected with the fronts, stuff like that. I mean, 
the ins and outs of the game really that are connected to the NFL game opposed to the college game. I mean, there's such a huge learning curve that I have to go through, and you know, I'm excited about learning it. And I love football, love learning it, and you know, I want to become a master of it really. Reggie holds it, top of the key, Chapman. Deep three-pointer, yes! Dylan Chapman from beyond the top of the key. EIU men's and women's basketball have each made it to this year's Ohio Valley Conference Tournament, and both have had first-year players emerge into contributing roles. On the men's side, that comes in the form of junior transfer Dylan Chapman, a walk-on player who's become a starter and key contributor for Coach Jay Spoonauer's team. Chapman says walking on was what he needed to do to chase his dream. I was recruited by NAIA schools and Division II schools, but my ultimate goal was to become a D1 player, so I knew, that, I knew what I could do, and I felt if I could prove that, then I could get on the court. I was going to be a walk-on, and my only two choices were SIUE and here, and Coach Spoon, like, he told me that there was a player last year who walked on, he started, and he told me if I could come in and work hard, play defense, and do things that he heard I can do, then I can get on the court. I watched him play, because we were recruiting, he played on the same team with Matt Petrovsky, and so I saw him play a, a few times. Um, but, you know, it was, it was just one of those things that he was, he had some, some scholarship offers from some low, you know, Division II or NEI, and we weren't really in the position where we could use a, a, a scholarship for a guard. And he's a great kid. I mean, good student, good kid. And, I, and he said, hey, I think I want to do this. And we were, we were happy. And um, he's played really, I knew he could guard. He's played better offensively than I thought that he would do. He's to the point now, we were trying, you know, we would get him in here and there at the beginning of the year. He played 12, however many minutes. But he's worked himself into where he is a guy you can't take out. Even when he has a game where he doesn't shoot it well. Like, it was easy to play him when he was making a lot of shots. He was shooting it in. But he, he's, he had a, a bad shooting game last game, and he still plays a lot of minutes because he guards away. Try to keep the chip on my shoulder because knowing I was a walk on, I was going to have to work harder than everybody else. So. Uh, I, w I didn't get discouraged at the, at the beginning of the season when I wasn't playing that much, so I just kept my head in trying to figure out what coach wanted me to do, and I figured it out a little bit, and he's getting me on the court now. Improved, I wouldn't say my defense, but that's always what I've been good at, so I don't know, like, talking to my players and trying to understand, like, like what they're good at so I can be a better leader on the court. Well, what got me on the court here is playing defense, and. That's how I started off was getting playing time, and as time went along, I proved that I can score a little bit, so coach is getting, uh, giving me more freedom to go in and score, but still I gotta play defense to stay on the court. Like I said, when I first got here, I wasn't trying to do too much. I, wasn't, I was trying to uh, fit in and see what everybody else can do first, but now as I, I'm getting more playing time, I'm trying to look to score and trying to help my team out offensively. Because we have Sherm down there, he's, the stats that he's putting up are crazy right now, so we got to keep feeding him the ball. So, if I have an open shot, I'm going to look to take it. EIU is entering the conference tournament as the number seven seed, and Chapman said once this year's over, he's got high hopes for his senior season. Next year, it's going to be looking nice because we have CO for a whole season, Chris, and uh, we, like all of our guards are like freshmen. So we have a lot of freshman guards or we're a young team and I'll be a senior next year so hopefully I can bring some experience to the guys who didn't play as much on the court. Hopefully I'll um, get a scholarship, that's my ultimate goal. And, uh, I, I, I think that I will be a leader for next year and I know our record wasn't that good this year but if we can get into the uh, postseason play then I feel next year we have high hopes for our team. They give it to Brown at the top of the key. She drives all the way to the basket, clothesline. No While Chapman has emerged on the men's side, the women's the team has seen from freshman from forward Royalty. Erica Brown come in and earn some significant playing time in only her first year as a Panther. Worked out great, actually. I mean, yeah, consider the bumps along the way. Um, I was being recruited by other schools, and um, Eastern was always there for me. Like, they recruited me since um, my junior year in high school, I believe. And so they're always a consideration for me. And after visiting the school and the campus, and I don't know, it just fit right. It was like, I always heard people say that. And until I visited Eastern, I could understand what they're coming from. It did fit well for me. I liked the team, I liked the campus. They had what I needed academically. So it was just a perfect match. Erica's been a success story, really. Um, you know, she hurt her shoulder. So I had shoulder surgery. 
um, in the summer. So coming in, into school, she was behind and really worked hard to, to get herself back on the court. And we've been ecstatic with her progress. Like you said, she paid her dues and she worked her way in. And now she's giving us tremendous minutes, um, both offensively and defensively. Defensively, she's one of our best players. Um, and we count on her for her consistency. So um, we're excited. We're excited for the future for her as well. You know, it really took her back. Um, you know, it's pretty significant. So to, you know, come into a uh, new school at another level and, um, you know, carrying that kind of injury, it's, it's a tremendous uh, credit to her, her work ethic. Um, she's a very cerebral kid, very bright young lady, and um, has a really good work ethic. All those things combined are, are getting her on the floor and giving us great minutes. It took a lot of work. Um, I was out for a good seven months, I would say. Um, in a sling for a good month and by the time I came back it took a while to get the strength back and the muscle and even then my shot it took a while to get my shooting down because it was hard to <laughs> raise above my head and all that stuff but um, with working hard every day it came back and I continued to keep working hard so so I overcame that. Coach Foley said that while Brown's play has set her apart as the season has gone on it's her positive attitude that makes her such a joy to coach. She's a really good kid, uh, first and foremost, so it's, she's easy to like. Um, she's a freshman, so she's got to you know, pay her dues that way as well. Um, but like I said, she's willing to do anything for anybody, and so that's always a good teammate. So she's a teammate first, which is great. Honestly, just, I guess, working hard every day in practice, come prepared, do what you have to do on the court, off the court, and um, doing what the coach asks you to do. And her gave me, the, she gave us all opportunities to play, and she gave me an opportunity, and um, I guess I did something she liked out there. So I'm just grateful for the opportunity that she's given me, especially as a freshman. Tremendous versatility, I think, and she doesn't even know it yet, which is, which is really cool. Um, from her standpoint, I think with the injury and coming in, uh, we didn't know what she could do, and I don't think she knows what she can do, and we're finding uh, she can play on the perimeter as well. So I think as she evolves as a player over time here, she's going to step out to the perimeter a lot more. And currently now she's playing the four for us, but I think in the future you might see her out there playing a little bit of three. Nothing's guaranteed. I've learned that, you know, the hard way. I mean, nothing is guaranteed. you got to make sure you're here every day. You can't just expect it. So I'm hoping that with hard work and showing up every day to practice that I would be considered in the starting rotation. But I know it's not going to be given to me. I mean, there's going to be new incoming players coming in, so I got to um, think about that too. With both Panther basketball teams looking toward their futures, it seems that Brown and Chapman have nothing but bright things ahead of them. I reckon it's not that good, but like somehow we come to practice every day with the mindset that like next game we're going to win. We never gave up, and coach has never given up on us. Like that's one thing that I really love about this team. Reporting for Panther Sports Talk, I'm Brad Kupiak. Calvin Edwards of Eastern Illinois Men's Track had a stellar freshman year. He was 2013 OVC Freshman of the Year, and he was selected to first team all OVC in the 200 meter and 400 meter, winning both events as part of the OVC Indoor Championship team. It was a very successful year for me here, my freshman year, because I didn't think I would do so well as I did, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people didn't think I would as well, but I did, and I would, I would want, like to continue this until I graduate. Coming as a freshman, you didn't think I was going to jump right into it, maybe a couple uh, meets here and there, but traveling every week with the upperclassmen, they suspect big things, suspecting big things out of me, as well as like me learning and still being a freshman here at a high school. Coach Tom Akers knows the talent that he has in Edwards, and he also understands what it takes to have success. Most athletes have a lot of goals and want to accomplish a lot of great things. You know, the attention to detail is what sets the good athletes apart from the rest. Everybody wants to be successful. The Olympics are on now. Everybody wants to be an Olympian and win a gold medal. But what they don't understand is the process and what it takes to accomplish those goals, what it takes to reach that level. Um, and so we're just concerned with making sure we're doing daily doing what needs to be done to continue to improve. You know, if we continue to work hard and do the things that help us get better, the results are going to come, the goals are going to come. The first year for freshmen is a really long year. I mean, we train, we train from early September until December before we have our first track meet, which is longer than the entire high school season. So here they go into training longer than they're used to training. 
so by the end of outdoors, he was, he was ready for the outdoor season to be done, like most freshmen typically that year. This year as a sophomore coming back, uh, has really matured a great deal. His, his work ethic, his attitude, his leadership, uh, all have taken giant steps forward, and I think that's uh, been reflected in the way he's been performing thus far this year. Edwards has carried on his success from his freshman year, as he's won his third straight OVC Male Trek Athlete of the Week. Going into year two, um, I always have to be better than I was last year. Faster, stronger, let's say mentally, mentally and physically stronger than I was. Don't want to don't want to dwell on last year, but you want to be better than it. And I'm saying take some things from freshman year and put it together what you learned from the, the set my second year here being here. Usually you like kids to come back and start out where they left off last year. Um, and like I said, with his, his work ethic, his attitude and everything, he started off way ahead of where he left off last year. And so we knew it was going to be a great year. And I think, you know, those awards that he has won thus far through the indoor season is just an indicator of what he's put in. I think he's still discovering what he's capable of doing at this point in time. And that's probably the best way to, to keep it, I think, because a lot of times when ex with expectations come pressures and, and then we start, uh, you know, if we start falling a little bit short, now all of a sudden we're carrying baggage, you know, around with us and more pressure starts to build. So, so I think, you know, his, his very calm, you know, sort of take it as it comes type of attitude is definitely working in his favor. Going to other schools, um, for my official visit, I felt very welcome and at home here at Eastern compared to other schools that I've been to. That went to that everybody was just like like to themselves and that didn't come introduce themselves to me as it here at Eastern like everybody was like more interested in what I was doing why I was here and like what I was running things like that and so I felt welcome like I wanted to be be a part of this team as well came here for two years for state and seeing it and knowing that they have won conference so many times you do want to be it did play a factor of me signing to Eastern as well and I'm glad I did sign here at Eastern. I would like to go to regionals indoor for two events, 200 and 400 indoor regionals. Uh, Long-term goal is to have my name on those boards back there for uh, multiple events and relays. But the comments have me so I can look back when I'm all old and like can't walk to like look back and, and see what I did in those four years of college. Go to mine, yes, yeah, some somewhere down the line to so hopefully run in the Winter Olympics as well. There's an Olympics general in general. Reporting for Panther Sports Talk, I'm Chris Boswell. Eastern Illinois women's tennis is 3-0 on the young spring season, and they're led by lone senior Janelle Prisoner. Prisoner says that while she plays both doubles and singles, her real goal is providing a good example to her younger teammates. Singles is more of a competitive one-on-one, um, -on -one, whereas doubles is more fun, light-spirited. Um, you have to be continuously pumping up your partner. You have to be, keep yourself pumped up, and it's just fun to be on the court with your, well, with my teammate. And I've gotten lucky to be, my, I love all my teammates, so it's like whoever we get paired with, it always is like a good matching because it's always so fun to play. That's The biggest difference is the fun atmosphere of doubles, and that's why most people usually enjoy doubles more than singles. Definitely, um, she's really become a vocal leader and number one a leader by example. The best thing I can say about on the leadership side is, you know, she's a great doubles partner, whoever she plays with. It's not something about how good they play, but I've never had a girl not love playing doubles with her because of the support, the leadership, the camaraderie she goes with doubles partner. It's huge in doubles. Everybody loves to, to be her doubles partner. That's a big compliment. I like to consider myself like a leader by example. So I'm always out here working hard, always like trying my best. And I think that they see that. And I mean, I would hope like they would do the same thing. And I think that a lot of those characteristics have, you know, implemented into their game. And, you know, seeing me work hard and all that, I think is really beneficial for them. Because it's kind of, when you come in as a freshman, you're kind of scared, you're like, I don't know how this is gonna be. But knowing that like your upperclassmen and the people above you aren't gonna be like down and like angry at you all the time if you make a mistake and stuff like that, it's, I think is really big. While she does a good job of leading by example, 
Both Prisoner and Coach Blackburn say it's her natural athletic ability and her desire to keep improving that sets her apart from her peers. A lot of athleticism, a lot of, a lot of natural ability. Um, she was a two-sport athlete in high school, so we liked that. That was attractive because we knew she would get better in college being a one-sport athlete, but also you know, being a team captain, being the point guard for her high school basketball team, we knew she probably had some leadership qualities some good team qualities that would help us and contribute that way too. My parents put me in a lot of different sports and I was one of those kids that could never choose which one I liked the best so um, my main two were basketball and tennis and I just really really enjoyed both of them so I didn't want to stop playing either of them so that's what made me play so many. When being a point guard you have to be really quick and like that's one of my biggest uh, strengths on the tennis court is my fitness, so I think it helps a lot with hand-to-eye hand coordination as well. The ability to be coordinated when you move, um, obviously quickness is important too, but I think coordinated quickness is probably more, more important than just you know how fast you can run 40 yards. I would want them to say that they see me as you know a leader and a hard worker. When I leave, I want them to remember that over everything else, that I was always out there giving it my best, no matter no matter how I felt, no matter how I was doing. I was that person that never gave up, and I think that's what I would want everyone to see. Like if there was a legacy, that's what I would want to leave. Her biggest strength, personality-wise, is work ethic. Um, nobody hits more balls than her on our team, and that sets the tone. Um, practice is important to her. She gets the most out of every minute she's out here, and that trickles down to other players and sets the tone for us. I have changed so much since my freshman year. Um, coming in, I would say that my biggest strength was my fitness, like soul fitness. Um, that's what I relied on. And now I would say that I use a lot more of my head and I'm not quite as crazy with my points as I was my freshman year, like setting up the points. I'm more strategic now. And I think that I've developed a lot since my freshman year. Prisoner says that once her career is done at EIU, she'd like to move on to a role helping other players improve and grow on the court. Everybody that plays here is special, but she's done some some very special things. And you know, it's the type of player who you kind of you grab their ankles when they're walking across the stage trying to graduate. You'd love to have her have her have her have her continue on here, but she has high goals for herself. She wants to be in college coaching, and we'll be really proud to call her an alumni of the program and you know, be proud of her progress after she leaves here too. She wants to get a master's degree. She wants to continue on in tennis and coaching and give back some of the things she's learned over the years. So we're excited about kind of helping her see what that process takes her. I think she'll always want to play, but I think her, her big goal right now is, um, is being, being in a master's program, helping a, helping, a, helping a team be successful next fall. That's one of my possible goals in the future. I'm going to try and be a grad assistant position somewhere for tennis and um, I just really like, I love the game of tennis. Like I love the sport and I don't want to leave it. So, and I think that I have some good qualities that could, I could implement onto others um, with my leadership, with my hard work and I can vocalize that and get that off into coaching. Reporting for Panther Sports Talk. I'm Brad Kupia.
production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by Johnson's Automotive Service is a proud supporter of Panther Sports on WEIU. Johnson's is a complete car facility for all your automotive repair and maintenance needs. Johnson's Automotive Service, keeping your life running 